Hopefully everybody got the questions in the email and on the post so that they could um, be ready to participate and um, we'll hopefully have a good discussion. So um, I'm just going to start with a quote. Um, so in the, you might need to close, sorry, <laughs> we're going to have to close our window. Um, President Nelson, uh, so President Holland starts with talking about the, um, the, that President Nelson invited us to look ahead to, to this April 2020 conference by each of us in our own way looking back to see the majesty of God's hand in restoring the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so he talks about how Sister Holland and himself took this invitation seriously and all the different things they were thinking about. Um, and he said that, um, he said, we asked ourselves, what's missing here? What do we wish we had? What do we hope God will provide in response to our spiritual longing? And then he goes through and talks about all the different things that they thought about together and the different things that they would have hoped for. Um, and, um, so in that regard, we're just going to start off with just talking about what blessings from the restoration of the gospel, of the fullness of the gospel of Jesus Christ, um, do you appreciate most or that you have noticed most in your life that you're so grateful for? So you'll have to unmute yourself, but go ahead and share your thoughts. Well, I'm um, great. Go ahead, Laura. The thing that uh, stood out to me when I joined the church was that I had, had always known, even though I was not taught that, that I had lived in a pre-existence, that I had lived with God before. No one had ever taught me that. And that's when I was getting in the missionary discussions and they brought that up. That was my big aha moment. Um, so I am profoundly appreciative of just even just that fact to know that we lived with a kind and loving Heavenly Father and raised my forms. Yes, definitely. Thank you. Memory? Um, kind of like Laura, before I joined Laura? the church, I always knew something was missing. And when I found out we had a prophet, yeah. I, I, me out I here. just overjoyed to know that I was right, that there was more. And, so, and it made me just feel you. so much more less alone and uh, more really comforted and, and then when I checked out about the Book of Mormon it just was like the cherry on the top because it just shared so many more wonderful um, truths that I needed to know and didn't realize. Thank you Emery. I know that's one thing that um, you know both of you from my perspective I just grew up in the church and so it changes it changes your perspective and, and the things that you appreciate more sometimes or just sometimes take for granted. So thank you both. So for those of you just coming in, we're just discussing and sharing what blessings um, that you have recognized in your life from the restoration of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Oh, sorry. It's always two people at the same time. <laughs> Go, Don. Oh, I was just going to say, you know, for the first 20 years of my um, married life, I was married to a non-member and raised my children in the, in the gospel as a single parent in the gospel. And, you know, now being married <laughs> to Jared and having the priesthood in our home, it's something that I definitely don't take for granted, especially at this time when we can still have our sacrament every Sunday mm -hmm. and just knowing that I have the priesthood in my home, it makes a huge difference. Definitely. Thank you. Yeah. I love that Dawn. I'm, I'm so grateful and happy for you in that regard. Um, yeah. So I think, and I think back in the very beginning when I was um, listening to a message from a wonderful sister at the time that I became active again and um and it was truly the gift of the spirit that i felt and it truly came from her message from the book of mormon 
So I, you know, those two things, the spirit and the Book of Mormon, um, is truly so much that I'm so grateful for that the restoration brought forth, that we have that additional scripture that brings such a powerful spirit. So I'm so grateful for that. And it continues to bless us. Bless me. Oh, definitely. Yeah. And um, that's something, I mean, everything that you guys are mentioning are things that they make such a huge difference in our lives. And with, it's hard to, for me, it's hard to imagine what life is like without it because I've always had it. But I mean, once you've had it, it's also one of those where you know what it was like before. And now like without it, it's hard to realize that you ever could have done or could have lived without it. And all of these things are just, I mean, it's just hard to, yeah, it's just hard to imagine, like, even if it was taken away from us, how to live. Um, the spirit is huge in our lives, and everything that we're talking about for, for the blessings, I mean, we feel the blessings of them through the spirit, too. So, thank you. Anyone else have any other blessings that they um, really appreciate or just that you want to share about? from the restoration of the fullness of the gospel? I think, uh, go ahead. Okay, good morning, everyone. Mm -hmm. I think that um, I don't ever remember hearing anything about families being forever. And after I, um, I had my family, I just felt like something was missing. And I'm so thankful for that knowledge that we can be together forever. It just um, is truly overwhelming, you know, in your thoughts and feelings that, that you can, you know, be together forever. Uh, and I think that is one of the blessings that I learned, you know, uh, from the Book of Mormon, and uh, I have totally appreciate that. Oh, definitely. Thank you. During this COVID-19 uh, time, I'm so appreciative of the organization of the church, you know, like Relay Society, Sunday School, Bishopric, because having these lessons and listening to everybody and knowing the prophets in charge just gives me great comfort and enjoyment that's another great one too for sure i'm definitely feeling the gratitude for that right now which i mean before before this i knew that the church was organized and we had things pretty you know set out really nicely and we just always knew what to expect for the next lesson and things like that but who knew that even just knowing what the next lesson was would be such a blessing to be able to even study and and read those things, even if we didn't meet in Zoom, um, just to have something that kind of keeps you focused and keeps you moving forward when you're stuck at home. So yeah, definitely, thank you. Um, and since we're on to that topic, um, let's just continue into that. What, what have you guys, we've kind of covered it a little bit already in talking about this, but are there anything that, is there anything that's very much stands out to you or any um, special experiences that you guys have had during this quarantine and the restrictions of COVID-19? Um, are there any um, experiences or specific blessings you guys would like to share about um, that you have experienced or um, been reminded of that you may not have thought of as much before from you know, before and then now in, in the lockdown. Yeah, I would definitely like to, oh, sorry, <laughs> turn this off. <laughs> I would definitely like to respond to that um, because it has been such a blessing to see my husband administer and do the sacrament in our home. That has really been a blessing. And it's just so sweet to see that. And um, so grateful that he has a priesthood and we can do this. And it, bring, it has truly brought a greater spirit into our home. 
Yeah, that has been a really neat experience. I know that not everyone is blessed with that, um, but it's really neat in my house because we've got some young men too. So it becomes a lot more personal when you're watching and listening to your husband bless the sacrament and then your children pass it to you and stuff. So I definitely, um, yeah, that's a really neat experience. And I really hope that those sisters here who don't have that have been able to get that access as well. And if you haven't, please definitely let us know. Like you can message me um, after the meeting or whatever, but please let us know so that you can have that at your home too. Thank you for mentioning that because that is really important. And we can invite, you know, at this point on everybody's comfort level, people into your home, sisters, yes. your home to do that. And so mm -hmm. I, I, yeah, I truly would, you know, emphasize that too. Thank you. Yeah, definitely. Well, I have a greater appreciation for my family during this time because we're stuck together. Mm -hmm. um, my husband's working from home. Sarah's finally gone back to work, but when we were all together, um, I real, really realized how we need to make sure that we are in, in contact with our family members, even if they don't live with us, and to make those ties stronger. Um, and I've also, I'm kind of a, what would you call it? I, I kind of run around a lot and I found that this time has made me slow down and I've been trying so hard to do as President Nelson said and that is to find out how the Spirit whispers to us and um, it's been very um, insightful to see how I just need to slow down. I think we all feel that memory. <laughs> we all just should um, at first it feels really strange because we're so used to having places where we have to go and meetings and appointments and all these different things. And then after a while you kind of like, Oh, this is kind of nice. And then, you know, just learning how to slow down. We almost have to relearn it because we are so busy all the time, but it makes a huge difference in how well we can recognize those promptings of the spirit and um, take the time to do those things that are important to us, like even just spending more time with our family, whether it's a phone call to someone who doesn't live by us, or like the people in our own home, who we also can take for granted, you know, because they're always there, but we're just so busy. So thank you. Anyone else want to share some blessings they've experienced during the lockdown I should have also added in a greater appreciation for my friends both in and out of the church they have really um, not realized how much they've lifted me by connecting with me thank you um, so another quote that he that Elder Holland um, he goes on to, he mentions all the blessings of the gospel that they realized or the things that they would hope for, but then he brings us to the idea of hope and um, when he, he's talking about how there are many hopes that we have had fulfilled in that regard with the gospel of Jesus Christ, but there are also still many, many hopes that we have many of us that all of us have that are yet to be fulfilled and so he talks about that he mentioned the pandemic that's going on and all those who are helping with it and those who are affected by it um and he he brings that topic up and then he mentions after talking about the virus he mentions he says um he talks about praying for everybody and then he says when we have conquered this, and we will, may we be equally committed to freeing the world from the virus of hunger, freeing neighbors and nations from the virus of poverty. May we hope for schools where students are taught, not terrified they will be shot, and for the gift of personal dignity for every child of God, unmarred by any form of racial, ethnic, or religious pre prejudice. Um, 
Undergirding all of this is our relentless hope for greater devotion to the two greatest of all commandments, to love God by keeping his counsel and to love our neighbors by showing kindness, compassion, patience, and forgiveness. Um, when I read that, and when thinking about kind of where we're at and what we're going through right now, I love that he mentioned like, okay, we've got this virus we're dealing with, but when it's done, we're done with this, how are we going to start to affect the world in a way for good by following these two commandments greater? Um, so how, um, how can we use this time that we're in right now with we're slowly coming out of it, but even then it's still a little crazy. How can we use this quarantine time and the things that we've learned over the past few months to help us um, better follow and do and actually do the first two commandments, which are to love God and to love our neighbor um, so that we can do what he says and um, fight the viruses of other kinds of the poverty and the um, just unkind um, actions and thoughts and what does he say he says um, hunger and poverty and yeah um, and then just um, not being afraid and all those other things so what can we learn or have you learned from this quarantine that can help you better um, follow and keep those two commandments to love God and to love others. Well, I, okay. I think that uh, I agree, you know, slowing down uh, has brought us closer to people and to uh, our families. And also, I think it, it has made us think about all the materialistic things that we think that we need, that our children think they need. And um, so I'm hoping for a more togetherness fu future. Um, to have a race that has been hurt so bad I think it's going to take a lot of work on each of us and uh, you know through the way we interact to other people uh, to remove that fear and I don't know how we can do that without us starting with our families and then going on to our neighbors and then on to our town but it's going to take a lot of work on all of our shoulders, a lot of love, a lot of prayers. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Yeah, and I mean, that's where all of this is. That's where all of it starts. That's what the gospel of Jesus Christ is teaching us, is to love God and then to take that time to individually do our absolute best. And as we do our absolute best to love others, then hopefully that helps other people do the same. And it's one of those things, um, you know, the quote where um, if you want to change the world, change yourself first, um, that it's something that we need to just continue to share that love, like you're saying, because that's what can break all these different things. That's what can help with the hunger and the racism and whatever else that we're experiencing. That is the key. Love doesn't magically fix things, but when we have love, that's when people's hearts change. That's when people can recognize that they have a savior that loves them. That's when they can realize that we're all God's children um, and that, you know, we can help each other through all of this. So thank you. So I, I can't help but add this, and I don't want to be commenting all this time, but you know, the great, greatest of all hopes is to share the gospel. That's what people need so much. And 
we, you know, we can do maybe a little better with the missionary effort and thinking about this even during these times. There are still ways to share the gospel. So that is probably the real key is to love the gospel and then share it. <coughs> you know, and, and also during this time, it, I've realized that in some ways it's taking more effort, but at the same time, it also isn't really that different. Um, it's more of a consciousness and awareness of, oh, I could just mention this on my Facebook post, or I could call up a friend and let them know I was just thinking about them, or, you know, all these different things. There's, there's actually a lot of ways that we can bring the gospel into our conversations and into our lives and even into other people's lives, but we have to be aware. Um, and it's not always easy, and sometimes you may be afraid, but I think that also ties in really well with the topic of hope that Elder Holland is talking about, that sharing that hope with other people is huge. Just that little glimmer of hope that the gospel brings to people's lives can change their lives, literally. Um, and it's just a matter of being having the faith to open our mouths. So thank you. I really like the sentence that says, because the restoration reaffirmed the foundational truth that God does work in this world. And we can hope, and we should have hope, even when facing the most insurmountable odds. Yes. And uh, I think that sentence is awesome. Oh, yeah. I had that one on my list to read. That one's a really good one. Like, it doesn't matter what is going on. Um, we have that, that knowledge that can lead us to that endless hope. Um, I looked up a talk that I had come to my mind um, that I always remember because Elder Uchtdorf talks about faith, hope, and charity and how they all work together. And um, so when I was reading Elder Holland's talk, I couldn't help but think of that and how um, hope is actually really important in, in the matters of the gospel and hope in our Savior and in the promises that our Heavenly Father has given us. And um, they wrote, he wrote, I wrote the quote down somewhere, um, but one of the things he described hope as is he said it pierces darkness with a brilliant dawn. And that made me think of that when you said that, you know, the quote that Elder Holland says, where it doesn't matter what is going on, if we have this knowledge and then therefore hope in our Savior and hope in all these promises that we've been given, every single one of us has been given these promises. If we have hope in that. It is that it pierces the darkness with brilliant, with a brilliant dawn. Um, and that's what hope can and should be, like Elder Holland says. I know he says in there specifically, like, you can and you should hope mm -hmm. um, because it is so important. And it really is that um, it can break the deepest and darkest days and thoughts and feelings. So thank you for sharing that. So is there, anyone else can still share um, like how we can use the quarantine to help us with those two great commandments. What we can learn to continue that. I'll give you one more. Well, studying the scriptures has really helped me a lot. And this is, um, as we know, the talks from conference are considered scripture. And this one was a wonderful uh, talk to read at this particular time. Yeah, definitely. It's been really neat um, reading the Sunday school lessons and the conference talks during this time and realizing how much they correlate with what's going on. Kind of scary at times and kind of just amazing that these, these are here for us right now when we need it and when we can relate to it and um, learn from it too. So thank you. So the next quote I was going to read was that one, the can and should hope one. 
um, by Elder, Qual uh, Elder Holland. And um, since we're on that, I know I, I talked just a little bit like how Elder Uchtdorf says it's important and that it's, you know, one of faith, hope, and charity and that it is so powerful. But why do you guys think that hope is so intertwined with everything? Why, like, what is it about it? Or I don't know, why does it make such a difference? Why can it be that piercing light in the darkness? I was thinking if, if we don't have hope, how can we possibly believe in the gospel? Because it's all about, you know, hope for things that we've not seen that are true. And that's what the gospel is all about. Yeah, definitely. It's a lot of unseen. The opposite of hope is despair. And mm -hmm. so if you had see the way it's processed in your brain, hope is light and bright, and dis despair or desperation is dark and gloomy, and they're the exact opposites. So without hope, you'd be, it would be awful. Definitely. Thank you. And there's opposition in all things throughout our whole life, and that is, you know, that's, that's the antidote, right? I like what, uh, Abraham, you know, they were talking about Abraham and Sarah, is that he was able to believe in spite of every reason not to believe. And I think uh, if we look at what's happening now in the world, it can really drag you down. And uh, you can think there's no reason to have any hope. Uh, that's why everything that you know, everybody has said that with the scriptures and knowing, you know, uh, what blessings we have and that God is with us all the time, that no matter what, we do have hope and we need to pass that on to everyone. But. Yeah, thank you. I think that is, I mean, kind of like what we talked about before is not only having it, but also sharing it. I know that um, one of the scriptures he mentioned in there is either 12, four. I'm just going to read it real quick. Cause it's always, it's been one of my favorites, but I just love the wording for it, but it's very fitting for today. It says, wherefore whoso believeth in God might with surety hope for a better world. Yea, even a place at the right hand of God, which hope cometh of faith maketh an anchor to the souls of men, which would make them sure and steadfast, always abounding in good works, being led to glorify God. And I don't know, I just, I mean, I think it's kind of self-explanatory, but also so powerful um, the way that I just feel like hope is one of those kind of like guiding things. It's a very active and alive thing, not just something passive. Um, and just the idea that the hope that cometh of faith that maketh an anchor that make them sure and steadfast. And I'm what, what better thing could we have? <laughs> what um, that would be, I mean, you think of an anchor and then the words sure and steadfast. And if we keep that hope in our Savior and that hope in all these promises um, from our Heavenly Father that we that's that are that is our anchor and that can help us be sure and steadfast no matter what we're going through. And I love that it mentions that we're also we're not just going to be sure and steadfast, but always abounding in good works. And if you think about the way things are going right now and how crazy it is and how ugly in some places it is. And we know that it's only going to get worse. It might get better before it gets worse, um, but it's going to be more difficult progressively overall. And to have the strength and the steadfastness, but to also be able to continue to share the light is what I see from that scripture, to be able to still be able to 
abound in good works, even among all of this. And I think that um, this hope in our Savior and hope in our Heavenly Father's promises is going to be critical because there are going to be times where we're going to not want to say that we're members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, or times where we may want to just hide inside away from everything. But when we're sure and steadfast through all of that, we'll also be able to have the strength and steadfastness to continue to do good and to continue to share that light that we've been given, um, even th when things are ugly or scary to go out into, um, that we can still have that influence on others as long as we have that hope in ourselves. So I just, I don't know if anyone has any thoughts on that scripture or any other thoughts, please share. Kimberly, this is Marta. Um, I'm reading some notes I took um, in my journal from a fireside I listened to a couple of months ago. And it, um, at the time I had been really studying faith, hope, and charity. And um, I love this analogy that this gentleman shared. His name is Anthony Sweat. But um, we all know that faith leads to hope and then that leads to charity. And you talked about those first two commandments. And that is what we have to be focusing on, especially during this time is charity, being able to turn outside of ourselves, even when we can't leave outside to go spend time with people, is to be able to focus on others and their needs and their hopes. And um, faith is a trust-based action in Christ. And he used the analogy of like a child jumping from the edge of the pool into the water where a parent is going to catch them. That's an uncomfortable gap to build trust. And God will give us those moments where we have those uncomfortable gaps and he'll keep repeating those. And that faith leads to hope. And hope is not a wish. Hope is a personal assurance of God's promises. So when we were a child and we jumped into the arms of our parent in the pool, we learned to have that hope, not a wish that they would catch us, but the, the assurance that they would. And so Heavenly Father will continue to give us these moments where we have a gap in that ability and so that we will we'll build trust in him. It's a, it's a learning moment for us so that we can have that assurance and know hope is not a wish. Hope is something that we can definitely rely on. I love that. Definitely. That reminds me of the scripture that says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. Yeah, no, that's perfect. Thank you so much, both of you. Um, that I'm glad you mentioned the assurance because that is a huge difference. And a lot of people think like, I hope I get this for, you know, whatever, or I hope that this actually happens. And you're right. It is, um, it's very, um, it's a, a set, a, Assured is the best word. I love that description and the um, idea of the jumping in the pool. Um, I know that uh, one of the things Elder Uchtdorf said is um, how hope is manifested. And he just listed a couple words. And he said that um, hope is manifest in confidence, optimism, enthusiasm, and patient perseverance. And all of that is very fitting to what you just shared, Marta where it's, um, con you're confident, you know, it's not something that's just wishy-washy. And I think that's also why it's so intertwined with faith and charity, because it's not something that's just a simple dream. It's more than that. So thank you. Does anyone else have thoughts on that or anything from the lesson, from the talk? I've been um, really excited when I heard about his talk because um, Elder Holland, he's one of my favorites. <laughs> but um, when he talks about a perfect brightness of hope, it just really touched my heart because my daughter Kaylee, her middle name is Hope. And so um, she has definitely filled me um, with so many, you know, she's brought me great faith and, you know, she's given me hope that anything's possible and, you know, and then charity comes along and, Maybe that's why I needed to give her that name. Maybe it should have been her first name <laughs> to continually remind me of that. 
but then again, you know, you know, where some, you know, certain kids stand right now too, you really have great hope that they will remember the things that they were learned, you know, that they were taught and they learned growing up. Um, Cause I know that that's something that he talked about in his talk also is, you know, yeah, there's ones. And then we talk about, you know, being all locked up and all the stuff that's going on throughout the world right now because of our different colors or our different religions or our different, you know, just our attitudes and everything. It's like, you know, we just need to continually to have the faith and continually have the hope and continually know that those around us, you know, still need, you know, we need to give unto them charity and to show others that we care and, and to know that we are strong, you know, that we, you know, again, we have the faith and the hope and the charity is like all that and the blessings will come, you know, it's all around us. And, and that's the things that help get us through these hard times. And, and I think that we think a little more and spend a little more time since we can't be running around taking the kids to sports or to school or, you know, a lot of us can't work. Well, maybe that's a little extra time that we have to go out of our way and to share those we minister or share those that we think about or that are going through different health um, problems and stuff right now. We just need to continually have the hope and faith and, and the blessings come when we're doing our part. And, and when we are having a hard time, reach out and others are right there to help you you know, to help you with the hope that it's going to be okay. I'm very thankful for that. <laughs> yes, thank you, Dina. And I love that you mentioned that, you know, we might need help too, because I know we've talked a lot about us sharing our hope that we have, that we, and the knowledge that we have with others. But it's so true. We need each other as well. And we have our weak moments or our, you know, those moments where we don't feel like it's very bright. <laughs> And so I love that you mentioned that as well, because we do, we need each other and um, we need to let each other know. And sometimes we'll get, you know, those tender mercies from the Lord where he has people intervene without us asking, but there are also many, many times where we need to be the ones that are brave and say like, I'm really struggling right now. I need help. And we do need to be the ones reaching out sometimes. And um, yeah, so thank you for mentioning that, because I think that is a very important part of it, because just because we have the gospel in our lives doesn't mean we don't struggle. It doesn't mean that things aren't hard, and it doesn't mean that we don't have those moments of despair or darkness or doubt, and it's okay. Like, I keep trying to tell my kids, you know, like, when I point out that they did something wrong and I'm trying to teach them, okay, well, what can we learn from this? They, one of my kids gets really down on himself and I have to keep reminding him that it's okay because that's why we're here. We all have our weaknesses. We all make mistakes, but that's okay. We're all like that and we all are just learning together, but we need to use that blessing of having each other. Um, because we do, we, we are available to bless each other's lives. So thank you for saying that, Dina. I, I think, uh, like you said, we all feel that. And I really like the, the few words they said about the ancient is Israelites. You know, when they said, our bones are dried and our <laughs> hope is lost. Mm -hmm. You know, I think oh my gosh, you know, sometimes we feel that way, like there's no life, and, and basically we do have to strengthen our faith in God, and, and we need to do charity to others too, because then we lose that me thing, <laughs> we sort of go out, yeah. Yeah, definitely, thank you. I know that he ends um, mentioning the sister missionary yeah. um, who's, who um, she, said, she said that we did not come this far only to come this far. But then he continues and says, paraphrasing one of the most inspiring valedictories ever recorded in scripture, I say with the prophet Nephi and that young sister, 
my beloved brethren and sisters, after ye have received these first fruits of the restoration, I ask if all is done. Behold, I say unto you, nay, ye must press forward with a steadfastness, steadfastness in Christ, having a perfect brightness of hope and a love of God and of all men. And if ye shall, saith the Father, ye shall have eternal life. Um, and I know that like that scripture in some ways can be intimidating because <laughs> we need to press forward with steadfastness in Christ, having a perfect brightness of hope. Um, but I think that also, you know, like what we've talked about, how we go up and down. And I think that when we're pressing forward with steadfastness, that doesn't mean that our pace might slow down. I mean, it means that it's okay if our pace slows down a little sometimes or speeds up. There may be times where we're on a full-on run and other times where we're barely moving, but we're moving forward. And I think that's what the steadfastness is, is it's a constant forward momentum, whether it's slow, fast, vary, or it varies. And also that perfect, um, as we've been taught, you know, the perfect isn't like um, flawless it's more of complete is the way it's been you know is what it really means and so complete brightness of hope um, I think it's just a matter of effort and how much we're trying and you know just doing everything we can to make sure we have access to that hope and that brightness that comes through our savior and that we get from listening to the words of the prophets and to reading the scriptures and serving others. Um, it's that just that forward momentum through everything. As long as we're moving forward, even if it's slowly, that God is there and we have our savior and the hope might feel a little darker at that time. But if we're moving forward, we are moving forward. We are getting closer. We are strengthening ourselves um and um i don't know i just know that hope can be such a wonderful thing and i love just how he says a perfect brightness of hope um and um i know that if we focus on our savior and if we take these things that we're learning in the quarantine time where we're stuck at home the making the little efforts to reach out to each other and to others and mm -hmm. people not in our ward even. It doesn't matter if they're members of the church. Making that extra effort to even, I know, smile at people sometimes, like on a walk. I love when someone's actually smiling at me when I'm on a walk. And I, you know, those little things that we, you know, maybe took for granted before um, and making those little efforts to share God's love with other people and also to strengthen ourselves. And if we do that, even after things get back to normal, that your lives will be greatly blessed. They'll be blessed now, but they will be, um, you'll notice the difference and notice the change that we can have um, if we stay focused and we have that, that hope and it will be an anchor to us. Um, and I say that in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. Um, thank you sisters for participating. You know, it's sometimes a little weird or awkward being on the camera and being on Zoom, but we really appreciate that you guys come and that you guys listen and participate because these would be pretty boring if I just sat up here or whoever was teaching um, and just kind of talk the whole time. So thank you. And um, remember to share these with everyone if if you know of sisters who maybe missed it or um don't have zoom or facebook then you know just let them know that we are still trying to post them on youtube and if you can't they can even have access to that share a thought from the lesson just spread the love <laughs> help everyone know that they're loved by all of us so thank you for what you guys do and for being here Thank you, Kimberly. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank Have you. Great Sunday. Yeah. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you everyone, for the love you've shown by donating things for my son.
Oh, I'm so glad it's it's coming together. I know it's been hard and it's going slow, but I'm glad it's coming together. Yeah, he's renting a room from Wendy Glunt when he arrives, since he doesn't have a place yet. And of course, once he arrives, that should be easier to find. Yeah. And he also now has a, a job um, and a possible other job because they may need to go together.